guys, it's me, Ellie DiGiulio, and it's time again for Coffee and Questions. I apologize, this one's a little bit late. My march was a little crazy and I forgot, so I'm just going to be honest there. You can also hear I'm probably a little scratchy. Um, I've been sick, and you can probably also hear the office next to me. I usually do these on the weekends so that they're not there, but I really wanted to make sure I got this out. So without further ado, we're going to dive right in. March was actually really great for me in a lot of ways because I took that whole month off of working on Maravash's. It got sent to the beta readers. I had four this time, which I have tried to avoid in the past, but these are all people who are really quality and really involved in what I'm doing with Forgotten Relics, and so I was really excited to have their input. Um, I just got all of it back, and so I'm going to be starting editing in April. Uh, which is crazy. Um, so it was nice to have the time off. I got to do some admin stuff. I redesigned the website. Um, I also got to just just have some time to to veg. I played Fable, the anniversary edition, all the way through. That was super fun. I love those games. Um, I read a bunch of books. Well, not a bunch of books, but <laughs> more than I had been. Um, and I also got to go to a, a tasting for... Uh, the St. James Cafe? I'm not sure what they're going to call it. St. James something here in Hamilton that a friend of mine is opening with some other friends of mine and the food was spectacular and I'm super excited for them to open and I will probably be doing a lot of pimping for them even though most of you will never go there although you should visit me and we'll take you there like in the summer when they open. So that was a lot of fun. March was really great. The weather was crazy. Um, but it has started to warm up and all the snow melted, so that's super exciting for me. Um, but yeah, so March was good. It was nice to have a little rest, and I'm, I'm ready to get back into it. I love answering questions about, like, the story behind the story. There's two of them this, this month, and I, they make me really happy. I love it when you guys ask about, about Cora and, like, the story behind what's going on in the novels. So Cora, Cora's typical day is kind of lame, actually, because she's a rookie. Like, when you're a rookie cop, rookie FBI agent, you're not really doing much unless there's an emergency, right? So she's a, she's a pretty light sleeper but doesn't want to get up. So that, that noise is my cat. Gonzo, quit it! He's tearing out the carpet. Um, yeah, so she's a really light sleeper, but she doesn't want to get up in the morning, so it's hard to get her out of bed. Uh, not as hard as Sophie, who is literally a bear. Um... So she gets up, goes to work, you know, makes it on time, sometimes a little rushed, but most of the time she's filing reports or she's shadowing safe cases or just doing desk work, processing incoming, incoming paperwork or even just trying to get people into lockdown. So anything that a normal rookie cop would be doing, she's not going to be spending all this time like she is in the books where it's a crisis situation. She wouldn't be spending all this time with, with upper level agents and doing all this stuff so early. Um... Let's see, what else did I write down? And then when she gets a chance, you know, she goes out and explores the city because she's a small town girl. DC is a huge, amazingly layered town. So doing that in her on her off days um, and, you know, having lunch with Sophie when they get a chance or if Sophie's not available, maybe with Scott, Kim. Uh, yeah, which would probably be really awkward. But probably not seeing a whole lot of Jack or anybody in the above, like, 70 range because you just don't see those people. And plus, there's so few agents in each of the five satellite offices that even, in, you know, where D.C. has the most with, like, 25 or 30 agents at any one time, you're not seeing a whole lot of anybody. Uh, the, na the nature of the work is pretty solitary. So she's not doing anything really super exciting uh, in, in a non-crisis situation. But I think, you know, it's relatable. You can see where if you had a day-to-day -day job just like that that you would just kind of fall into the same patterns every day too so it's not exciting i guess but it's you know it gives a little more depth to the the intensity of what's going on in the books where this is so not normal so then cora's evenings when she's not on night shift of course um you know, doing stuff that what anybody would do to relax, like have a beer. She's not really a great cook, so probably microwaving her food. <laughs> a lot of ordering out. Um, a lot of TV, so binge watching seasons on Netflix, uh, you know, fantasy shows, police procedurals. 
Um, you know, she's got a plant, she's got a house plant that she's trying to desperately keep alive to make her mother proud. And um, a lot of black and white movies, reading books about mythology and fantasy and just true crime here and there. Maybe like, um, I don't know, comic books probably. Just to kind of keep, keep up her geek cred. She really enjoys that kind of thing. For Sophie, um, obviously she's a really serious sleeper, especially in the winter time. Uh, when she's not sleeping, she probably reads romance novels. She's got a little soft, squishy heart underneath the, the tough girl exterior. Um, likes romantic comedies and sitcoms and kids kids shows. In uh, Ink Changer, she's wearing a, a My Little Pony t-shirt, uh, which if you don't know that, you need to go back and read it or read it for the first time. Uh, and she also keeps in touch with the kids that she can from back when she was... Uh, living in Runaway Heights. You know, she's got that, that family mentality and they were her, her first chosen family. So she definitely keeps in touch with them when she can. And Jack, um, his apartment is very explicitly described in Mirror of Ashes, which hasn't come out yet. Um, but he has a pet Tribble, which I won't explain. Uh, that was perfectly timed by the way, G.I.J. I don't know if you could hear her purring. And um, so he, he takes care of Bitsy and cleans his, his weapons and doesn't have a TV. He has a lot of books, um, but they're all like historical research, SCD archives kind of thing. Um, more laundry than you might think. You know, he takes meticulous care of his clothing as he takes meticulous care of everything in his life. Um, and he's actually a, quite a good cook. He learned from his grandmother, who will become a, um, a big deal in later later pieces of the story. Uh, so he cooks for himself, but, you know, pretty intricate and involved dishes, and he, he's actually harboring a longing from when he was a teenager and in his early 20s to do that, you know, a little more professionally, which is, I guess, something you would expect. So it makes, makes me happy to tell you these things. So that's what, that's what typical evenings at home would look like for those three guys. So yeah, the con schedule this year is one con, which I'll talk about a little bit later, um, actually in the next question. It has been impacted by my job. I, I can't just take off willy-nilly. I mean, I'm super, super part-time, so it's easier to take off than if I was doing a full-time gig. But um, honestly, the, the monetary investment that I put into it last year, I didn't see back. Um, I, I was in the red, not by a whole lot. I was, you know, double digits in the red, not triple or, or quadruple, but it still, it was a big blow. And I don't have the inventory, the physical inventory right now to, to go and, and make that investment. So it'd be even more. Um, you know, our, our expenses are just different this year. Um, I'm hoping that I'll be able to one day get to Phoenix Comic Con. Um, I want to get to Planet Comic Con in uh, Kansas City because that's where I'm from and I have several friends out there you know hi Josh hi Eliane um, and yeah so that I have plans but this year is just not gonna happen I will be at Ad Astra Toronto next weekend um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that right now I am going to Ad Astra this year as an actual guest. Last year I was there, I was helping out my cover artist, Des Kern, with her um, art show, like building things to set up and just to go, um, and they gave me a reading, which was really nice of them. But it was at like 9 o'clock at night in the basement on the first day. So that sucked. <laughs> but, you know, I sold a couple of books and I saw some people and that was fun. Um, some guy took a picture of my tattoo, because for, um, Geek, Geek Inc., I think, magazine. And so I got a little bit of exposure out of that. Not literally. Uh, so, but this year they invited me back as an actual guest, and so I am on three panels, and I have a reading, and I'm helping Des with the art show. Um, so let me, uh, let me refer to my notes here, because I can't remember everything that I'm doing. So on Friday, I'm on a panel called Jesus, Brother Bob, and Cleopatra talking about inventing fictional people for alternate history, which is 
so much like I applied for like 20 of these panels and they only gave me three but this one I was really excited about because I get to talk about like King Tut showing up in in Sword of Souls um, he becomes a character later and like talking about the the way that my system the system of belief and changing how people um, you know live and, and die in the supernatural world and you know we believe that people like Johnny Appleseed had a real person and you know these people that we know as historical figures like King Arthur how they're changed in order to fit my system so I'm really excited about doing that and then I have an, a reading just the next day like at really really late at night with um, oh I don't want to get her name wrong I think Catherine Fitzsimmons I think that's right I didn't write it down sorry um, and then Sunday I am doing a fairy tales panel like rewriting Grimm Anderson and Aesop about how what we get out of stories and and why we need them and why these people were so important and this one is super extra like ridiculously cool and I had like a little bit of a flop sweat about it um, Charles DeLint is the the figurehead for this panel and if you don't know who he is just google him uh, he's one of the the granddaddy novelists uh, one of the forerunners of, of modern fantasy and I am flattered as all hell and just honored that I get to share a table with him and I may just be staring and just wrapped at what he's saying and not say anything at all. Um, but that's super exciting and I, I'm, I'm just completely thrilled. I'm also doing um, mental health in fandom, which deals with how mental health is displayed in literature, in TV, movies, and why we don't want to talk about it, and why it gets made fun of, and, you know, I'm really passionate about that just because, you know, I've, I've dealt with it so much, you know, as somebody who suffered from depression and anorexia and anxiety and all kinds of horrible crippling things, um, it's, it's something I'm really excited to talk about. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm super excited about Ad Astra, and I really want to make the most of it this year since it's the only con that I'm going to. My number one thing that I'm looking forward to in April is the weather. Uh, right now, as you can see, I'm in a tank top, uh, and it's April 2nd. Um, it's not going to last. Uh, here in Canada, we always have one really bad drop, and it looks like the weekend it's going to snow. But it's going to be like 65 degrees today. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to spring really being properly here and it being warm and beautiful and my mood to be better. I'm also looking forward to getting back our tax refund. I, like, I didn't owe anything because I made such miserable money last year, but Lino's tax refund is going to be significant and that's going to be a huge help because we need that stuff like a vacuum cleaner because ours exploded. Um, so that'll be great. Um, I'm also super looking forward to Ad Astra, and right now, I'm not really looking forward to it, but I am really excited about the, the homegrown Kickstarter that we're doing to fund the Mirror of Ashes cover, where um, last time I tried to fund the, the book cover by myself, which was a huge flippin' mistake. Uh, so I'm asking you guys again to, to come in and help support me paying Des and um, I'm super excited about it because it's running right off the website and I'll definitely include a link in the, the video description so make sure you go and check it out uh, at led.com slash mirror of ashes. Um, yeah, so I'm really, really pumped about it. Also, I get to edit this month. I have all my beta readers feedback and it's largely been good which is encouraging for me. It tells me that I'm, I'm growing, like I'm really finding my stride as an author. It also says that um, I might be getting a little too comfortable, so it's time for me to kind of shake stuff up again. Um, but yeah, it's good. I'm really looking forward to it being done with this book so I can get it out to you guys as quickly as possible, and then I can start writing the next one. <laughs> so, um, yes. That is it for this month. I really thank you guys so much for all the questions that you've given me. Um, I always love getting them, especially the ones about the story universe itself. So please keep them coming. If you are not a member of Team uh, Patreon right now, then please join us. It's five bucks a month and you get free stories and free books and all kinds of neat swag. So just come on over and join us and then la launch your questions at me for next time. So I will see you next month. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Bye.